In this video, I'm going to show you how I built Iron Man's Mark 85 helmet out of EVA foam. My name is Tristan and welcome to my workshop. If you want to make this helmet for yourself, the templates are available in my Etsy store and I'll have a link to it in the description below. Let's get right into the build. After downloading the templates, you can print them out following the printing tutorial linked in the product description on Etsy. Next, cut off the border around each page so they all line up properly. You can do it with scissors or a craft knife and a straight edge. Finally, lay the pages on a table and tape them together, trying to make sure everything lines up. Do just a couple pages at a time and then combine them together to have a fully assembled template. Now it's just a matter of carefully cutting out each part. Take your time for this as you want your parts to stay as accurate as possible. Make sure you keep your guides close as you'll need them later. It's time to trace the templates on EVA foam. You'll need mostly 8mm foam and a little bit of 5 and 2mm. These are the only two parts that are not 8mm foam in the whole build. For tracing the templates, I like to use a silver sharpie or paint pen. You can use sewing pins to keep the paper from moving while you trace around it. The little lines all around the parts are registration marks. Make sure you also transfer those. Then you can remove the template and extend the marks inside the part. If the part has dashed or dotted lines, make sure to also transfer them. They indicate outward and inward angle cuts. If the part has two X on it, it means it's symmetrical on both sides of the helmet. Flip it over and trace it again the same way you just did. You can also transfer the letters which help to know how parts fit together. I won't do it because I already know how it goes together. Here's a part with an outward angle all the way around. This one specifically is only 10 degrees so make sure to indicate it on the part. Every other angle can be cut at around 40 to 45 degrees. If a part has lines inside, Simply cut the template in a way that lets you transfer those lines to the foam. I like to use a thinner red pen for those lines. Finally, if a part has a little arrow, it means you have to trace it down, flip the template over that side and trace it again. This gets rid of a visible seam on the final helmet. This part is a tricky one, so in case you need a visual guide, here's how it should look. And here are all the 8mm parts traced on the foam. The 5mm part needs to be traced twice and make sure to flip it. The same thing goes for the 2mm part. With all the templates transferred to EVA foam, it's finally time to cut them out. I like to use a box cutter for straight cuts and a craft knife for curved cuts. Make sure you take your time since accurate cuts will make the assembly process much easier. For inward angle cuts, you need to tilt your blade towards the part you want to cut. You should end up with something like this. Outward angle cuts are the opposite. Angle the blade away from the part when cutting it out. This should be the result. Don't forget that those two parts only have a 10 degree outward angle. This is what you should end up with. Cutting everything out does take a lot of time, but it's a pretty satisfying process. Here are all the parts ready for assembly. All the parts you see here have to be heat formed. Take out your heat gun and heat up a part on both sides. Keep the heat gun moving to not burn the piece. After that, form that part on a round object. A hair dryer won't work for this as they don't get anywhere hot enough. Here are all the heat form parts. The parts you see here need more detail added to them before assembling the helmet. Let's start with the easiest. The two 5mm parts each need a line down the middle. Take out your craft knife and score halfway through the foam following the traced line. After that, heat up the parts to open the cuts, and here is the result. The two earpieces need a border all around and a line down the middle. Start by scoring and heat forming the border. You could use the same technique for the line down the middle, but I used a wood burner. I used a metal ruler to guide my line. Make sure you wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area when burning EVA foam. Here are the finished parts. The faceplate needs to have three-dimensional brows. Make sure you trace the two lines at the back of the piece. The lower line has to be scored from the back almost all the way through. This lets you fold it out and fill it with hot glue. Once the glue is dry, cut a V-channel on the second line at the back of the faceplate. To get a V-channel, score the foam at the left of the line with the blade angled towards it. After that, flip the part 180 degrees and do the same on the other side. You should be able to peel out a strip of foam and be left with a V-channel which you can fold inward. Take out your contact cement and apply it inside the channel. Let it dry for a couple minutes and close up the channel. You should be left with a nice angled three-dimensional brow. 
This channel on the L-shaped parts have to be inset about 2 millimeters. I decided to burn the foam to achieve the right look, but that ended up not being the right choice. It took a while and looked kinda rough. I would recommend just cutting out the part and gluing it back together 2 millimeters lower. Then this border has to be scored and heated up. After that the smaller border has to be cut out and glued back in lower. You can remove 2 millimeters from the back to make it flush with the inside once you glue it back in. Another detail is the two little circles on each part. Making them out of foam would be really difficult so I just blobbed on some hot glue. Make sure you practice this technique on scrap foam first as it can be a little tricky. Finally, the piece needs to fold inward in this corner. Simply make a V channel at the back and glue it closed with super glue. All those parts are finally finished. With all the details added on, it's finally time to assemble the helmet. Let's start with the dome and you'll need those three pieces. I'll use contact cement for this build, but wearing a respirator is really important because contact cement releases toxic fumes. Some people brush on two coats of glue, but I found just one works just fine. Carefully stick together the two longer seams on the dome pieces. Before going any further, some edges have to be rounded. I like to use my Dremel with a stone bit for rounding EVA foam. You have to round off the three edges at the front of the dome, the three edges at the back, and the three corresponding edges on the smaller piece. After that, simply glue on the smaller piece at the back of the dome. The next part to assemble are these three. But first, round off the whole earpiece, those three edges on the upper part, and the two front edges on the detailed piece. Assemble the three parts as shown here, and after doing the same thing for the right side, you should end up with this. Let's assemble the lower front of the helmet. Start with the chin piece on the upper piece, and make sure you center it properly. After that, glue on the lower trim piece, and this looks pretty good. The next assembly is the whole faceplate and mouth, and you'll need all the remaining parts. Start by closing up the darts on the faceplate. After that, round off the edges of the top half of the faceplate down to the ears. Also round off the bottom edge. You can also round off the eyes to give them a cleaner look. Next, the mouthpiece has to be rounded all the way around, and those parts have to be rounded on both ends. Once that's done, you can glue the two upper cheek parts on the faceplate, followed by the mouth. And that looks pretty cool. Now the lower cheek pieces need to be glued on, but make them flush with the inside so they sit 2mm lower from the outside. The last parts to add are the eye frames. You have to glue them inside the faceplate. It's pretty difficult, so really take your time on this step. And the faceplate assembly is done. Now you should be left with 5 big parts. I started by attaching the faceplate to the lower front part. Go slow and make sure the 5mm piece sits at a 2mm inset. After that, it was time for the dome, which was pretty easy. Finally, I added on both ear modules. The last parts to fit are always the hardest. With a completely assembled helmet, I let the glue dry for 2 hours and gave the helmet a quick heat form to get rid of any lumpiness in the shape and to make sure it's as symmetrical as possible. It's time to prep the helmet for painting, so to seal it I decided to use Mod Podge. This time I mixed black and white paint in it to get a grey base coat. I wanted to have a sturdy and sandable finish so I applied 5 good coats. After that I used 80, 120 and 220 grit sandpaper to remove the brush strokes and to get a smooth surface. Then I used Liquitex light modeling paste to fill in any imperfections on the helmet. After applying the filler you can use water to smooth out the surface. After two coats of filler, I use sandpaper and a sanding stick to sand down the filler and make it flush with the surface of the helmet. It's finally time to prime the helmet. I sprayed on two good coats of sandable automotive primer. Then I went over the whole helmet with 120 and 220 grit sandpaper to remove any texture which I might have missed before. Then one last round of filler with a bit more sanding gave me an almost perfectly smooth surface. I applied one last coat of primer to have an even color and then moved on to a gold base coat. I sprayed on two light coats. I masked off everything that shouldn't be gun metal and sprayed on two coats of duplicolor automotive paint. Then a bit more masking for the red and two good coats of a nice metallic red also from duplicolor. The final color to apply is the black for the eye frames. I decided to brush on acrylic paint for this part. 
One weird thing that happened with my helmet is that the paint was glossy in some areas and matte in others. I did more testing and realized that this paint should dry matte. I just applied it a bit thick in some spots. That's no issue because my plan was always to use a nice two-part finish for my clear coat. This one is from Spraymax and it's a little expensive but it's super durable and looks really nice. The reason I didn't use a one-part clear coat is that almost all of them dull the shine of the gold paint and turns it an ugly shade of yellow. After two good coats the helmet looks amazing. Although I'm not very good with masking and some of my lines weren't very clean. So to hide that I decided to weather the helmet it just a little bit. I used brown and black oil paint for that. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of the process, but you can check out my videos of the Boba Fett armor and helmet. I used the same method there. Next, let's add some fake paint chipping with chrome paint. I applied it with a small brush and a toothpick, but I made sure to sand the area first so that the paint sticks better. I only added paint in a couple specific spots to keep the scratches subtle. Those are LED eyes with a battery pack and a switch. You can find them for pretty cheap online and they even come in different colors. I simply hot glued them inside the eye frames. After that, I added upholstery foam inside the helmet to make it fit better. With that done, you should have your very own Mark 85 Iron Man helmet. Here's the finished helmet and I think it looks really cool. My favorite part is of course the paint job which is super glossy and metallic. Of course the faceplate doesn't open but if you want a challenge you could try to make yours able to open. As I mentioned before the templates for this helmet are available in my Etsy store so you too can make your own. And I'll see you next time, bye.